Hi, welcome back to High School Science 101. Today I'm just going to show you some of the interesting things that I've got lying around in my office. Let's check it out. This is called a music box. Uh, they come in a range of different brands and a range of different songs as well. This one's Let It Be by the Beatles. And I got this one in an exhibition in Seattle. It was a music exhibition and they had um, all different types of guitars and uh, gizmos like this in the gift shop. So it has a metal barrel here and when you rotate this lever, these little studs hit these teeth in a certain way so it makes a song. These teeth are different lengths so they vibrate at different frequencies and produce different notes when these studs hit them. So we'll play it on the hard surface first. So you can hear it quite well because sound travels really well through solids. But if I hold it in the air, gas isn't as good a conductor as solids are for sound. So it's going to sound a bit quieter. So that's a music box. It's really fun to play with and you can get lots of different songs. So check it out. Try and find your favorite song and see if you can get a music box for it. Next up we have a one-fifth scale replica of a Mazda rotary engine. Mazda used these in the RX-8, but also the, RX, the whole RX series of cars, the RX-7, the RX-3, the RX-4, and let's open it up and have a look. This was invented by a guy called Felix Munkel, who was a German engineer, and he developed this in the 20s, and it's since been used in a range of applications from cars to jet skis. Uh, it's a really, really cool design, very simple how it works. We have this rotor, that spins in the middle. This would normally be made of metal, of course. This rotor spins in the middle. It has a lot less moving parts than a normal engine. And it spins a lot faster than a normal engine too. It's got higher RPM. So, to explain this, we need to look at these empty spaces. Starting here, we've got air coming in, so air intake. So as the rotor spins, air is sucked in into this compartment. And then as we continue to rotate it, that air is compressed. And then as we continue rotating it around, this is now ignited, these are spark plugs. The air is ignited, and then the air is expelled here through exhaust, out here. So we've got intake, compression, ignition, exhaust. And it spins really, really quick. And you can actually have three of these in a row. And I think the RX-8 has two more of these, and so it has three as a stack. Uh, they produce a lot of horsepower, so they spin really quick, but not a lot of torque, which means they're not really ideal for cars that are going to be towing trucks or going up steep hills or pulling anything heavy. That's why they're really good for small, light Japanese sports cars or for jet skis. So this is the Mazda rotary engine. Uh, they do use up a bit of oil and a bit of fuel. They're not the most economical car, and that's why they're not really developed anymore. I think Mazda stopped using them in 2012 because they didn't meet the standards for emissions but hopefully they'll um, pick it up again and make, maybe make an electric one. We'll see. But that is the Mazda rotary engine. It's a great, simple, elegant piece of engineering. I bought this in the local electronics shop recently. It's just a little solar powered car, $14.95, couldn't go wrong. And it was looking pretty lonely at the back of the shelf. So let's have a look at it. I thought this would be really handy when we talk about energy transformations. So let's open it up and have a look. So on the back of the packaging, it says it's probably the world's smallest car. It says probably the world's smallest car. So they can't really say it is because legal reasons. But we've got this massive solar panel on the top. I say massive in proportion to the size of the car. It's actually one of the smallest solar panels that I've seen. And you can see it's got our gears here, a little motor. So it's really handy for showing light energy being converted into electrical energy. It's actually cloudy outside at the moment, but I'm going to try and uh, put this up to a light source. And this is a halogen light, and you can see it works quite well. So it's I'm going to keep an eye on the weather, and I'll try and get this going in the sunlight for you. So it's a nice day today, but there's a bit of a problem. The sun has to hit the solar panel directly, and in summer, that wouldn't be a problem because the sun would be up there. But it's winter, so the sun's down there. So what I've had to do is add some blue tech to try and tilt the solar panel towards the sun so it's getting direct sunlight. And this is something you'd have to think about if you bought one of these. Ready? Set, go! The 
last thing I've got for you today is this puzzle sort of thing called Motive Cubes. I got it in the Guggenheim Museum in New York and each cube has its own little pattern and there's 68 billion different combinations of patterns you can make with these cubes so it's really fun to play with. This is what it looks like. It's uh, got lots of these wooden cubes and each cube has different patterns on each of its faces and you can just rearrange them in a whole bunch of different combinations and as the box says there's over 68 billion different combinations you can arrange these in so every time you're going to get different patterns. So it's really relaxing and pretty addictive to play with and a really good time waster. If you're ever in New York, go to the Guggenheim Museum and check out the gift shop and you can pick yourself up one of these. Really fun to play with. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed all of the things that I've shown you and if you want to see more of these, please like, subscribe and leave a comment and I will see you next time.